Good morning, everyone. This is meteorologist Shane Hinton hopping onto our digital platforms to give you an updated look at your eclipse day forecast. Right now, you are taking a live look toward Round Rock and toward downtown Austin from our tower camera this morning. Let's go ahead and dive right into it right now. You are seeing a few breaks of sunshine in the clouds uh, right there from our tower camera. Unfortunately, in Round Rock, it's still looking fairly overcast for us. That is going to be the case as we head throughout the day. In fact, I do think it's going to be a mostly cloudy day over Overall, it is going to be very difficult for us to view this eclipse, even though we are still expected uh, to see the darkness that's going to happen even behind the clouds. Um, it's not going to be the most ideal viewing conditions. Let's kind of walk you through the timeline, and then we are also going to be talking about the severe weather threat that we are going to be monitoring after the eclipse. So right now I've got the highlighted path of totality. You can see that it is a very overcast start to the day. We can maybe even see a few isolated pop up showers and maybe even some drizzle mixed in there by around lunchtime. Let me kind of zoom this back backward a little bit for you by around lunchtime. We could start to see some breaks in the clouds right there. Um, it is very scattered in nature. There is no rhyme or reason to where the clouds will break apart. This is going to be one of those things I've been calling it all morning uh, a lottery, if you will. Some lucky few could win. Most will not with uh, the cloud coverage. I'm just trying to set your expectations here. The latest high res model that I'm showing you right now, it updates every 15 minutes or so. So the map, if you watch during daybreak, does not look the same as it did uh, you know, an hour ago or two hours ago. Mason County, the northern edge of Mason County, I'm seeing some pretty consistent breaks. Gillespie County also seeing some breaks. Burnett has been consistently uh, overcast. I, the, the small northwestern portion of the county has had like a small patch in it, but for the most part, it's been looking fairly overcast. The I-35 corridor, including Austin, Georgetown, we could maybe see some breaks, but for the most part, it is going to be on the cloudier side for us here. Uh, this is at 12 o'clock. Let's leap forward to around 1:30. This is whenever totality is going to occur, at least in the ballpark of it. Pretty similar story for us here. Very scattered cloud coverage as we head into the late afternoon between three o'clock and eight o'clock. We are going to be monitoring a series of showers and storms, some of which could be on the stronger side that are going to be pushing in from the south and then moving up to the northeast. I think that's going to mo mainly be impacting the coastal plains after eight o'clock. Then the activity winds down and then we will be monitoring a severe weather threat for Tuesday and possibly early Wednesday morning. Your hourly forecast for today has a starting around 70 degrees by 8 o'clock, or at least that's where we were at around 80 or 8 o'clock. And as we head into the afternoon, lower 80s expected area wide as those storm chances start to increase. Right now you're taking a look at the fog throughout the area. Let me pull that up full for you so you can see what we're working with. As you can see, it is a, a fairly foggy start to the day. We are seeing reduced visibility in Burnett out there in Cameron in northeastern Travis County as well. Speaking of Travis County, we were seeing let me pull up that tower camera shot for you real quickly. Once again, this is a look from our tower camera shot right now. It is showing small. I'm seeing little pokes of sunshine here and there through the clouds, but it is very stubborn in nature. So as we take a look at your current conditions, temperatures are sitting in the lower to mid 60s in the hill country, upper 60s to lower 70s along and east of I-35. I'll walk you through again once again uh, that timeline for you today. By around 1230, we're seeing those scattered breaks in the clouds. By around 1:30 to 2, we could see some light showers that are out there in the coastal plains, but for the most part, we're sitting nice and dry, just cloudy uh, for the I-35 corridor and hill country where the eclipse will be occurring. By around 3.30, we see those storms starting to bubble up in the coastal plains and then move out to the northeast by 8 o'clock tonight. Now, I want to also compare the high resolution forecast models for you here uh, because not all of them are showing the same things. So the one that we show on air, I've had been showing on air this morning, is the more optimistic of the two models to kind of show you the best case scenario. That would be the graph model. You can see the scattered breaks of clouds here and there. The HRRR model, which is also a very popular model that we use here on uh, KVU, is a lot more pessimistic. OK, it is showing very dense, widespread cloud coverage, no breaks in the low clouds, um, kind of not giving anybody any hope. We are kind of skewing more towards the graph model because we want people to at least be situated where there is a chance versus just saying there's no chance at all. Right, uh, but I am just showing you that it certainly is possible that we're dealing with low cloud coverage everywhere. Now let's manage your expectations and show you what you should expect. Most will see widespread low cloud coverage that's going to obscure your vision of the eclipse. 
you will still see it get darker. You're just not going to be able to see all the fun, cool, celestial uh, impacts that happen um, in real time, watching it happen in front of the sun. The clouds will obscure it. The lucky spots, the lottery winners, as I'm calling it, will see low clouds breaking up. Maybe a few filter. Let me give you the full detail here. Maybe a few um, shimmers of the sun through some upper level clouds. Those are going to be area wide today. Those upper level, maybe cirrus clouds uh, that we're expecting for you. So the lucky winners will get that today. Let's refresh you on that uh, timeline when totality is going to begin. Remember, this will change based on your zip code. So we've selected some areas, but keep in mind that your specific neighborhood could vary. So, you know, give yourself a few minutes padding um, on either side to lead up to the event and also at the end of the event. So, for example, Fredericksburg, 132 with 58 seconds. Keep in mind if you are even just a mile away from Fredericksburg and your address is still Fredericksburg, it will be a slightly different timeline. Now it's not going to be five minutes or 10 minutes. As you can see from Fredericksburg to Georgetown, um, that's quite a bit of distance, but it's only a three minute difference or so in regard to the timeline itself. So that's why I want you to be kind of set up in your viewing area a little bit before the times that you're seeing on your screen. Dripping Springs will be just before 135. Blanco will be just before 134. Austin just after 136, as will Georgetown. How long will totality last in your neighborhood? Fredericksburg, almost four and a half minutes of darkness for y'all. Lano, a little bit shorter by a second. Burn it also about four minutes and 20 seconds. Georgetown will see over three minutes of darkness. Austin will be just under two minutes. Blanco around three and a half minutes. Once again, reminding you of your hourly forecast for today, you can see that it will be a cloudy start for us with our rain and storm chances on the rise, mostly for areas east of the I-35 corridor for the afternoon and early evening. And then I think our rain chances will be fairly isolated overnight until early Tuesday morning. Now I mentioned there is a severe weather threat. Some of those storms could be strong. You do see that level two risk that encompasses all of central Texas. The main concerns will be large hail, isolated tornadoes, and maybe even some damaging wind. So let's break those threats down for you here. You can see it's an elevated risk for tornadoes and wind. You see those uh, hatched basically black slash marks on the screen for hail. That means significant size hail. We're talking around two inches in diameter or so possible within any storms that do develop. Your allergy count for today keeps oak in the medium category. Ash and mold are both on the low side for today. You will notice that today is not the only day that we could see a severe storm risk. In fact, Tuesday will have an even higher severe weather risk, uh, especially for areas along and east of I-35. It will be the same concerns with large hail, maybe even some damaging wind and tornadoes. Unfortunately, that could continue into Wednesday morning as well. And then we have a clearer weather pattern from Thursday all the way into the weekend. So once again, it is not the most ideal forecast for viewing the eclipse today, but we want you to be aware that there will be some hope with some breaks in the clouds and that the eclipse is the, not the only thing we're tracking. OK, we have a lot of things we're juggling here in the KVU Weather Center for you. Please make sure you are not only focusing on the eclipse forecast, but you are also staying up to date with the severe weather risk. I know a lot of the headlines right now are focusing on the eclipse, but we want to make sure you're staying safe and realize that there is a very real severe weather threat after the eclipse event happens not only today, but Tuesday and into the early hours on Wednesday. We will continue to stay on top of all of it here in the KVU Weather Center and we'll be providing updates on air and online. Until then, I hope everyone, uh, you know, I'm crossing my fingers. I was wearing yellow today to try and help manifest the sun. I wish you the best of luck wherever you're going to be viewing the eclipse. Stay safe out there and we will keep you updated on the severe weather risk and all the eclipse forecasts uh, over the coming hours.